Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today is harvest day. We're gonna go to the vineyards and prepare all the grapes and get them ready to be made into wine. Pretty exciting. The weather is actually not that amazing. But we're gonna make a good day of it. And Yana, our little pregnant lady over here, is uh, gonna be preparing lunch. Are you excited? Super excited. <laughs> cool, let's go. Today we're in beautiful Bezenets, my hometown and a lovely little winemaking city located in the Hodanin district of South Moravia. Apart from making wine, they have two kebab shops, a bowling alley, three grocery stores and lots of fruit trees to make enough alcohol to get the town drunk. So follow me to the family's vineyard where they have been making wine for over a century. And later on we'll go to the wine cellar, which is just as old. I'm excited to take you with me and show you what it's like to be part of a family that makes wine. We couldn't start this vlog without me saying, let's go! Our day, my friends, begins here, in the vineyard. With over 700 vines, 40 plum trees, walnuts, apricots, pears, and many other fruit trees, this vineyard is considered small, but still makes over 100 litres of wine every year. Jana's father considers it a hobby, even though it's been in his family for so long, and has even had best wine at a few festivals. Now let's get to the work of picking some grapes. I'm sure it's more exciting than that. Okay, we're walking in, we're walking in. I also just want to point out there are no English speakers in the vineyard today, so I don't understand very much of what they're saying. Well, except for Dan, he speaks a little bit of English. <laughs> Armed with only a pair of garden scissors and a bucket, we worked our way up and down the vines. The rules are clear. Put the grapes in the bucket, tip the grapes into a bigger bucket, and take them away on the tractor. Easy! What could possibly go wrong? And if you don't feel like working so hard, just eat some grapes. Check out our grapes. They are delicious. Dan's doing more work than me, but I will help him out. <laughs> it's a little bit windy, but we need to get the bad ones off here. Okay, so we must find the good grapes. and kind of take away the bad ones. There was some bad weather recently, so we have a lot of grapes that look like that. Not really so good. No juice in them. Pretty much raisins. We just done this whole uh, line here. Got our little buckets. Definitely got more to do. Stay tuned. This is how we spend our break: uh, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, and uh, you know, relaxing after picking all these grapes. Look at them. Hello, Mr. Whoa! What'd you say? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, there's definitely more grapes out there, but it's break time, you know. Now the combination is complete. If I can open it. I don't know how to open it. Come with me to check out the true Czech experience. Going into the vineyards, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer. All right, uh, we're getting back to it. To be continued. So it was time to raid the neighbor's vineyard, which is unkept and unused. And I'm eventually gonna fix it up myself and we're gonna produce a whole lot of wine from it. But that's probably gonna be next year. 
Also, this vineyard is a friend's, so we're not actually stealing. Just to let you know. But you can see here how overgrown it is, and that's not typical for a grapevine. Usually you have to cut it down to two small main stems, and that will produce the best grapes. One of the best things about being in the vineyards is that there is kind of fruit everywhere. Now, we, we do have like over 40 plum trees here. Um, but it kind of makes plums every two years, and that's how we make Slivovice. So this is the year that we're not growing very many plums. But, but you get to eat it. So good. Mm. It's a good time. So so far we've picked some white grapes and uh, would you believe it, red grapes. <laughs> And we've also picked some pink grapes. I'm not sure what that's going to be. But I think maybe Frankovka or uh, who knows. Here's our little monster though. The monster cousin. He's fine. <laughs> Uh, I think it might be time for lunch. By lunch, I mean afternoon snack. Let's see what we got. Ciao. So we have a little, uh, I guess, vineyard tra traditional little snack. Like sliced bread and some kind of spread. So yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't actually know what's in this one. Mm. Nevim. Mayonnaise. Cheese. I don't know. But very typical uh, vineyard little snack. Every break should have a beer and something to snack on. Czech people love beer and they love little snacks. Drink a lot, eat a lot. That's the way it is. It's pretty nice being out on a day like today, but there's so many flies around, it is really making it. Uh, it's kind of annoying me. I didn't really wear clothes to go to the vineyards. Got shorts on, flies all over my legs. I hate it. And I didn't use any gloves, my hands hurt. But I'll stop complaining, eh? So? So we've pretty much nearly picked all of them. So we're just gonna put the rest of the boxes back on the back of the tractor. Back on the back of the tractor. And then we're going for lunch. Let's see what Yana made. And let's see if I can help actually make this wine this year. I know I made some wine the year uh, before, but let's try and see if we can get a better look at how the process goes this year. I'm excited. Hope you are too. Back to see my beautiful baby. Oh, hey Tills. Tilly's been cooking all day. Haven't you? Let's take a quick look at lunch. Yana's been cooking all day. Apparently they made a little fire. Oopsies, I wasn't meant to tell anyone that. <laughs> the look she gave me. Uh, we, we have some homemade mushrooms, which you probably caught in the forest. We've got so much chicken and some potato. That time in the vineyard really took it out of me. Time for lunch. I couldn't wait. The lunch break was short-lived. It was time to process the grapes in that century-old wine cellar I was talking about. 
Now, I'm not sure what this machine's called. Let's call it the Deseminator 3000. Not the Inseminator 3000, it's very different. This one takes the stems from the grapes and allows the grapes to fall down to the bottom. So this machine here kind of pierces the grapes and lets a little bit of the juice out, while also removing the stems. You load them in the top, the stems come out the side, and the grapes fall down to the bottom. I don't know how it works, but it works. Good one. Wait a second, maybe it doesn't work. We're currently having a couple of issues with the machine. Uh, <laughs> I also don't understand that much check, so I'm, now the lights have gone out. Um, so, interesting to see what's going to happen, because we have so much grapes that need to be juiced. 20 minutes later. It's still not looking good. Now I don't really understand anything about electronics or anything about a motor, so I was pretty much useless. And I also couldn't converse and check. So it was the waiting game for me and the mechanic game for them. Uh, I guess while uh, the machine's not working I can show you around. So this is the first level of the cellar, it's pretty cool, pretty dark, pretty old school really. I think this place is about 100 years old, which is unreal, I love that there's a whole lot of history here. Um, let's go check out the other side and the archive. And here we go, I just absolutely love the walls here. I think it's sandstone, oh it's really wet, it's really wet and really dense down here. It stays at constant temperature all year round, so this is why it's a great place to keep the wine. My hands are absolutely sticky. One of the really cool things I like about this wine cellar is that there are a whole lot of old coins. So if you have a little look at the wall. But I actually did bring some coins from Australia, so I will eventually put some up here. And uh, I would love to be a part of this whole this whole deal. Really cool. Um, so this is where the wine is. Wine is typically stored in these big drums. And as you can see, we are, there is a fair few of them. But if you are to ever be lucky enough to try some of the wine from the archive, that's where the good stuff comes from. And let's have a little look. I'll need to use my phone light because it's not really working down here, but we'll see what we can do. Lots and lots of uh, dusty old wines. You know the dustier the wine, the better it is, so. What's going on back here? Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could show you more. The light's not very good down here. But there is plenty of wine in the archive. And I have been lucky enough to try some of it. It's absolutely delicious. Definitely, you know, give Czech wine a go if you have a chance because it is absolutely delicious. And if you have a little look at these mechanisms, this is how you try the wine from the barrels we looked at earlier. First, you must suck the wine up. Get it into that little circle, little area, and put your finger on the top. Then you're able to serve it once you let go of your finger, and a little bit of wine will come out. If anyone does know what this is, English or Czech, please drop a comment and let me know. And this is like this is like the main little uh, meeting room where you'll come and bring families, bring friends, you know, sit around, drink wine, eat bread, meat. It's everything's here. It's just a little bit messy at the moment. But I'm hoping to clean it up in the next couple of years. Very excited for that. Let me show you something cool about the wine cellar. Hold on. If you ever need to go to the toilet, bang. You just go here. It's an old telephone box. And if you check it out inside, we've got some old telephones. Moshka, Washington. Vatican Tivole. But only go here if you're desperate. 
Although it's a bit nicer than some of the other ones. The machine's not working still. I'm starting to think that we're gonna have to go old school and use our feet to get the juice. Waiting was such a hard time. I like, I don't even know how I'd done it. We even got help from the neighbor. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. <laughs> All seemed lost until the man in blue arrived, Mr. Nikola Tesla himself. And then it was on. It was time to load the grapes in and see what this machine could do. As the grapes go through gradually, the stems are discarded to one side and the pulp and juice go down the bottom. Next it was time for the hard part, moving the grape pulp from one barrel to the other. And my little bartending hands have never seen such hard work. I guess I'm gonna have to get used to it. No schedule. Okay, let's stop for a sec. I want you to do two things. Close your eyes, and next, imagine you're sitting on the toilet. And go. Nato, Nato. Did that bring back any memories? I hope it did. Yum. After spending hours just waiting around for the machine to be fixed, it was finally done and time to go home. It was at least 6.30 p.m. by the time we finished and we had started around 8 a.m. It's fucking dark outside. Looks like Yaroslav's about to close the door and maybe we're leaving. <laughs> Hopefully I'm here to press the juice tomorrow. We will see. But that was my day in Czech Republic trying to be a Czech man. Hope you liked it and hope you learned a little bit. And I'll see you for the pressing. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do any of the pressing as I was sleeping and so I was just part of the cleanup process the next day. But that's okay. Next time we'll try and do it for sure. But definitely stay tuned for more. There's definitely going to be some wine festivals coming up soon and I'm definitely going to bring you along with me. So stay cool, be nice to your mum and I'll talk to you next time. Matilda, would you like to say anything to the crowd? Say subscribe, 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 subscribe. If she's not going to say it, I'm going to say it. Subscribe my friends, hope you like the content. Stay cool, I will see you next time.